Alright, so you made it this far and you're doing great. If you followed along so far, you should have XML Choir on your desktop ready to be used. I've included a sample document that we will be using to query and parse, so go ahead and get that downloaded as well. Let's get started by opening the XML Choir and dragging and dropping the newly downloaded document. So let's go ahead and open that real quick. Perfect, and let's drag and drop the document. As you can see in the document, we have a bunch of nodes. Starting off, we have the root node being the Winward Studios node at the top, this one right here. And below we can see the employees, which will be the parent node. And below that we would see employees. So this being the parent node, and this is the child node of that parent node. As you can see, this node has a, an attribute of employee ID equals five. And we also have some last name, first name, title. So it's really easy to identify what we're working with. So let's start using XPath to query our data. We do that by clicking XPath up here. Actually gonna clear that out. Okay, it's not gonna clear up because it's selected. There we go. So let's put this on the right hand side. I did that by holding the Windows key and clicking the right arrow on the keyboard. And this one we're going to put to the left side, which it won't even let us do. So we're going to do it manually. Perfect. Now up here is where we're going to be writing the X path. So in order to get from one node to the next, we use the forward slash. So let's do forward slash windward dash studios and another forward slash. Well, before that, we're now we're technically inside the DOM. So we can start getting some data. So let's do another forward slash and let's dive a bit deeper by doing, you know, the forward slash, which we just did and type employees. Now just a little bit deeper and do employee. And as you can see, we got nine results showing on the screen, but it's all kind of jumbled together. So let's make that a bit more readable by selecting just the last name. So forward slash last name and it has to be capitalized specifically. So as it says on the left hand side there, we can see that the, the node is called last name with a capital L and capital N. All right. So now that we have all of these entries right here, let's be a little bit more specific. We can see that we have a employee called King as his last name. So we're going to be using something called filtering. And we do filtering by using curly brackets. So let's do employee curly brackets last name equals whoop, equals single quotes king. And there we go. As you can see, it pulls up just the information about king. So let's do a slash city to see where it's located. And we can see that that will be in London. So this gives you a basic idea on how to filter and how to navigate through nodes. Let's try something a little bit different and start over. In the XML on the right hand side, we can see a node that has the attribute of employee ID. Let's say we want to sort it by that attribute. All we have to do is, let's see here, slash windward studios, another slash employees, slash employee and so that, since we're filtering we're going to do the brackets and we're actually filtering through an attribute so we got to use the at sign for attribute and employee oh, there's a space in there not, not supposed to be a space employee id equals let's say two as you can see we get the information about Andrew Fuller. And again, we can dig deeper by doing slash last name. We get this last name Fuller. Let's do one more example where we search through the order. So let's start off by deleting this to start over. And a quick tip here is that XPath allows you to do a double slash to enter the root node being the Windward Studio. So slash slash and we're already in. All right, so let's get the orders by doing slash order and as you can see, we get 830 entries. That's quite a lot to manually go through. So let's filter this by the employee ID. So at, actually we're not doing at because it's not an attribute. We're doing employee ID 
equals to and I misspelled employee so employee ID remove that and get it back now we can see all the 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 orders made by Fuller that we looked up earlier and now it's only 96 speaking of sorting by attributes we could actually sort by the order ID attribute so at order ID equals let's see there's quite a few so let's put in a somewhat of a random number let's do the one that I see to the right here equals mm, let's see 10 2 4 9 so 10 2 4 9 I forgot the equal sign let's remove that and put it back in as you can see by doing a space at the end and then removing it it refreshes it that we get that specific order. This is all the information you need to get up and running writing the scraper.